What it is, what it do, cyber world. It is your girl, the one, the only, Ash Said It. Ash Said It.com, Ash Said It.com. Welcome to the Ash Said It daily podcast show. I appreciate you guys for all of your love and support. Over 1,700 episodes and half a million streams worldwide. None of this would be possible without you guys. So I thank you so very, very much. And yes, now we are getting well into the summer months. So even though some of us are still at home, some of us are going out, but you know what? It's always a good time to try out some really awesome recipes, okay? So today I am honored to have with us, oh my goodness, this is a lifestyle influencer, a cat mom, and the author of the unofficial TikTok cookbook, the wonderful Valentina Musi. Hey, Valentina. Hi, Ash. How are you? So happy to be here. Oh, thank you. I'm good. How are you doing today? Great. It's a little rainy in Miami, but... Not that bad. Ah, Every but you time. but you're still dealing Every with days will come. Yes, you know, Miami vibes. I mean it, it just you know, you're in Miami. I mean that's a that's a celebration within itself. <laughs> so <laughs> I love that. Love that, love that. All right, so Valentina, to start things off, my first question for you is what was your dream job when you were a kid and how close have you actually come to that dream? Okay. Oh, man, that's an interesting question. So uh, when I was growing up, I was that kid who was really into the big club, and I was president of my model event team at school. Um, I actually, after I graduated high school, I was supposed to go to school in D.C., mm-hmm. and I did uh, intern with Congress, and I did intern for... Mm-hmm. Uh, the Miami mayor's office when I was young, and I thought I was going to do something in uh, political science, kind of just, like, help people, maybe go to law school after. Mm-hmm. I was very, very politically active and, and passionate. But then after those internships, I realized that really wasn't my calling. Mm-hmm. Um, I just kind of was just enamored with politics. I thought it was the corrupt and not as... <laughs> I just like pictured it, so definitely yeah. has nothing to do with what I do now. Um, yeah. I'm currently a recipe developer, cookbook yeah. author, and what you would call an influencer. And I so I focus this lifestyle of food on Instagram and TikTok, so it's super far away from <laughs> anything political. Yes. So talk a little bit about that. So when did you, was there a point that you realized, you know what, this social media stuff is pretty serious. I might be able to actually, you know, make a living off of this stuff. Was there something in particular that happened for you? I, I think so. I mean, uh, it escalated to that point, but I started my account four years ago. After I decided I didn't want to move to D.C. anymore. Mm. But it wasn't like I had a goal at the beginning. Like, oh, I'm going to do this full time and this is what I love to do. No, I just always enjoyed going to restaurants and eating out. My parents, uh, I, I'm the oldest kid yeah. and by a lot. So they would take me everywhere with them and trips. <laughs> They went on dates, so I got to go to so many restaurants. I always enjoyed it, yeah. but I didn't think much of it. Mm. I just started taking photos, and, and my dad said, well, why don't you just post them somewhere? I'm like, okay, I'll do that. But I was just hyper-focused in, in, into, like, building this serious career and going to college and all these other things. And this was kind of, like, my side project mm. for fun. And then suddenly, like, after a year of just working at it and posting photos, my focus was kind of, at the beginning, was reviewing restaurants in Miami and South Florida. So I was always the first person at a restaurant when it opened, and I was the first one to take photos. And I was just reporting on, on that, on those you new know, things within the the local restaurant industry. But after a while, like, my, my account started to grow, and, and I had started, I had remember my first partnership. Mm-hmm. I had, I think it was with McDonald's, actually, because they had a new ice cream sundae. Yeah. And, like, a local uh, fran- franchise owner who owns several uh, McDonald's franchises here in South Florida paid me to post about it. I was like, that's so crazy. Like, that's <laughs> insane that someone wants to pay me for my photos. 
And it was only like six months within starting my account, but I didn't still think much of it yeah. until it just escalated to these crazy plans, like really big brands wanting to work with me. After, uh, I remember I worked with GoDaddy and they built yeah. my website and then I filmed the commercial for them. And then uh, a couple of months after, I had Google reached out to me and asked me to be an ambassador for their phones, the Google Pixel phones. Mm. And they took me on a trip and I was like, oh my God, <laughs> I'm considered a creative. Like I'm part of this creative community. Yes. I mean, I, I got to meet so many photographers and artists, uh, videographers and, and all sorts of creative directors. And I just started thinking, wow, I really enjoy this and I really want to take it to the next step. But I didn't know at the time what it was. I've been, you know, with social media, it's really difficult because there's no trend or there's no, I don't think this is at all like a linear path. Mm. There's so many, if, if you catch right here, like there's ups and downs, but there's so many new things evolving. Like TikTok wasn't in, in the panorama like a year and a half ago. TikTok mm -hmm. wasn't really a thing mm -mm. and now I wrote the unofficial TikTok cookbook <laughs> so it's super fast paced you know I don't I'm, I'm, I can't tell you what I'm going to be doing in a year no. I don't know And I think that's what makes it so exciting is because people like yourself, you jump into your passion. It's like, like you said, you weren't even really laser focused on doing this stuff. It was more of a hobby to you. And then somewhere along the line, your voice became so vital and so important to where people want to hear from you. They want to hear what you have to say. They want to see, you know, you're using the different products. They want to give your you know, your take on it. And so I think that is so powerful, but that also speaks to you finding your purpose, you know, so to speak, maybe not like in life as a whole, but as in right now, you absolutely serve a purpose in this social media stratosphere. So kudos. <laughs> Thank you. Kudos to you. And um, all right, so let's get into, all right, the, the unofficial TikTok cookbook. So what was the main inspiration behind you compiling this, you know, this book of your work, essentially? Right. So, I, you know, and it's probably, cliche as it sounds now, the last year was very difficult for everyone with, yeah. with the pandemic. And I think that at the beginning, I, I used to mostly work with restaurants. So I find I found myself like having to pivot and, and how am I going to, keep on creating content while I'm at home. Mm -hmm. Well, it just became me posting recipes. I've always enjoyed cooking. That's the thing. I I always liked to bake as a child, but I never aspired to work in the kitchen because mm. I've worked so closely with a chef at a point and I thought, this is not for me. It's these hours, their hours are crazy. I mean, a baker wakes up at 3 a.m. To, to make their fault. So, no, I didn't think that was for me. <laughs> But I started, I was at home. I had, you know, at the time there were so many food shortages, so I had to make recipes or food with whatever I had. And it still make it entertaining and fun. And uh, I just got into the kitchen and started being creative. I mean, I had a decent background. Like I, I, as I said, I was a good baker, a good cook. And mm. Immediately, like within weeks, I realized, wow, this is really what I love the most. More than just <laughs> owning a restaurant and, and working with chefs, like I realized, like, wow, this is what I'm genuinely passionate about. Mm -hmm. And then I started making videos every single day, like posting two new recipes a day and, and making all these things that went viral on TikTok and then taking the trends and making them my own. So there was whipped coffee. And mm. I made it my own somehow. I managed to, based on that trend, I made a whipped chocolate milk. So yeah. I created that recipe. And then after that, I saw so many creators and chefs all over the world recreate that. And then the same thing happened. I saw the, the, pan, like the pancakes, the mini pancake cereal. So I started making different cereal versions of them. I made little muffins. I made mini croissants, uh, mini French toast. I made... For instance, instead of, of just regular pancakes, I made them panda shaped, as you can see on the cover of my cookbook. So just that inspiration, I, I just 
took it and I went I went with it. I, I think that historically speaking, a lot of creative people have been found like the most inspiration at times where they're just at home, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Does that make sense? So I think that's just what happened to me. I didn't have any distractions. It was just me. I lived alone. So I was just baking and baking and cooking and learning new techniques and, and perfecting old ones. And I was just actually I was very, very happy at the time. It was, it was a great time. And then after I was able to, uh, my publisher approached me, Simon and Chester. They wanted to make a book with this like someone mm. believed in those recipes wow. I was other than flattered I was so excited yeah. I, 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 I mean <laughs> it's the first you the book deal so quickly and being able to put all those recipes I worked so hard on and, and develop into one book that is aimed to people all ages because that's what I really try to do um it's whoever's listening is not familiar with what I make it's usually a few ingredients I'm talking five ingredients almost no prep uh, really easy but fun and, and a little unorthodox and saying I sometimes mix up using my microwave. Mm-hmm. Like I made a cinnamon roll in a mug inside a microwave. It still tastes good. Yeah. Or, or stuff in your air fryer. Like I remember it was crazy with the banana bread, but I made banana bread in the air fryer because it, it really <laughs> put, cuts down the bake, the bake time. So just unorthodox but fun and accessible to everyone. That's something that's really major for me. Yeah. Accessibility. Mm. It, I'm talking that with skills, but also uh, with like a price point. Like I, 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 yeah. I don't think that food and, and recipes should be expensive. I love it that anyone can get the ingredients. I would say this. Either you go to Walmart or Whole Foods, you're going to get the ingredients. It's going to work out. It doesn't matter what you use. Sugar, sugar, flour, flour, mm-hmm. and it's going to turn out. Yeah, and I think that's one of the main things that really attracts attracted me to your recipes is like like you said, you usually have like maybe five to like seven ingredients max. There's not a whole bunch of rec- not a ingredients involved with the recipes. And like you said, it's stuff that people probably already have in their pantry or they have it in their refrigerator already and you're just combining these things and just making an awesome afternoon. I love it. <laughs> I love right, it. You see something it. to do. <laughs> yes, definitely something to do. So, Valentina, where can people pick up this book? And, of course, to follow you on social media. Great. So, my book is available everywhere books are sold. So, Amazon, Target, Walmart. Uh, we have a Walmart version that has 85 recipes instead of 75. So if you go to Walmart, that one's going to be have a little extra. Mm-hmm. But you can just get it at Barnes & Noble wherever you get your books. Or you can also support a local independent bookstore. Mm-hmm. And you can follow me on Instagram or TikTok. I'm at Tweet Portfolio. Or if you want to shoot me a message, uh, my email is hello at thesweetportfolio.com. I read my email and I reply to everyone. <laughs> if you have any specific questions about the recipe. I'd love to get back to you, too. I love it. Valentina, thank you so much for joining us today. You have truly blessed us and sprinkled some wonderful, wonderfulness on us. We love it. <laughs> uh, thank you, Ash. Not a problem. Be here. I really appreciate it. I'm so uh, grateful for your time. No, thank you. And I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Thank you so much for your love and support. Keeping in mind, anyone to tell you that you can't do what you want to do. You look them square in the face. You tell them, don't believe me. Just watch. Watch what I do. Watch me make it happen. Watch me make history. That's what we're doing this for, the history books. Social media is nice, but real life is so much better. Until next time, you guys.